Hi everyone, welcome to a Monday market update here on Easter Monday. These markets never sleep and neither do I. Just joking, I'm feeling a lot better. Thank you for all the well wishes and uh, and whatnot. Um, I, it was something a little bit like COVID. I thought it was gastro, but I, I think it was one of those things. I know a lot of people are getting it. It has all the COVID symptoms without it actually being COVID. So uh, it was a pretty rough couple of days there, but uh, we got through it again. A lot of fatigue. So I'm actually really surprised I got through some of my videos I did last week. You may have seen the concentration wane about halfway through. So apologies uh, if it did affect the viewing experience. Um, but today we have a pretty fun episode because I think we are really close for Bitcoin to resolve itself, which will resolve the rest of the market's moves. We've got a lot of stuff happening in the macro. So uh, Trading Economics is your friend here, that website that tells you all about the um, inflation prints when they come out. Also the uh, core inflation readings, you know, all that. On the 12th, we have, let's just crack straight in and I'll show you. On the 12th, we have um, a pretty significant reading and that is uh, core inflation rate year on year, Forecast 5.5%, the previous is 5.5%. So inflation, if that hasn't moved, uh, then expect this to be pretty neutral, um, this event, um, maybe a bit of a sell-off into it. But uh, the the bullish side is if this comes in, because it's forecasted to be exact same as last week, there's actually a bit of room here for it to actually be under, uh, as well as to the upside. So I think we could get a bit of a jump either way uh, in terms of the bullish and bearish case. Right now, markets are trying to price in whatever this data is going to come in as uh, but so far, the inflation rate year on year looks like it's going to be pretty comfortably coming down, as well as the month on month coming down another, um, you know, uh, basis point down. So that is overall quite positive on the 13th FOMC. Um, the fly in the ointment here again is the futures markets are slightly changing again. It's pricing in, you know, potentially a 0.25% rise. And we know last last month it was pricing in no more cuts, um, potentially rate cuts. This market is so flip-floppy, it's not even funny. People have no idea what's going on. Um, but just broadly, the Fed is so, so close. If they're not going to stop this month, it has to be next month um, with everything going on. But again, I'm going to reserve judgment. They're going to do what they do. Uh, if they come out with another 2.5%, I'm going to be extremely surprised, but that doesn't mean anything. Be prepared for it. Uh, but apart from that, you know, markets are a bit unsure. Um, so if they come with another 0.25%, I think markets actually get hit because I think the bullish case has kind of been priced in again. And then that will be unwound again if they come in and raise rates another 0.25%. But we're going to see. The talk is very, very tough still at the moment. So uh, again, we're just going to have to wait and see. The fly in the ointment as well is the uh, stronger than expected labor market, which is actually weakening in the real economy, seeing headlines of um, people getting laid off and, you know, cuts here and there. But broadly, the labour market is still holding up strong, but it is beginning to weaken. So there are cracks there that the, the recession is still on its way. It's still coming. So the, the stopping of these um, rate rises is imperative pretty soon. Uh, it's just whether they're just going to keep going dogmatically into it. Again, we're just going to have to play the ball where it lies. So this is all a minefield for this week. And we're going to see uh, again, volatility. When do we not? Um, so, yeah, exciting times. Let's have a look at the S&P 500 because... You know, all that economics, trading economics, whatnot. it's a lot of short-term noise. And we do talk about that a lot now, um, bi-weekly. This is, again, short-term stuff. We want to have the longer-term picture. Markets are going to react to these shorter-term movements. But just broadly over, if you're looking at a longer-term trend, where are markets going? Um, so the S&P 500, I'm looking at it here. It, this looks incredibly good. In, in my eyes, this is on the weekly for the longer term. If you were to zoom in on the daily, it's choppy. It's on top of the 200-day moving average going under. It's up, but, you know, it's going up now. But just looking at this chart, you know, where is it going? Higher lows, it's trying to make a higher high. If this prints a higher high, then, you know, this is pretty pretty on board for a, a, a you know, retest of these highs. But you remember, we broke out of that that lower um, trend line here, just this bounce, this lower tr down trending trend line, broke above it, retested it as support, and now we're just going high, exactly the same as Bitcoin. So broadly, the longer term thesis is higher, uh, but again, shorter term noise, good for you if you want to be trading and you know staying up and whatnot. But if you're just looking for that longer term signal, then um, just zoom out on the charts a little bit there. All right, with Bitcoin, <clears throat> let's have a look here, and this is. Um, and I know Joe's mentioned it a few times, the funding rates, it's just not there for the bears. Right now, what bears want to see um, for, you know, a mega flush back to 25, it's not the core ingredient, but for the 
for that mega flush narrative to really play out and really hard where everyone gets kind of crushed with a downward move to you know, 25, 24, 23,000, there needs to be a lot of people aping in and going long. The derivatives really drive the market heavy volatility either way. Uh, and right now, we're seeing a market actually quite cautious. We're seeing a lot of people opening up shorts, uh, more so than longs. So there's still a lot of caution out there. And we see that by funding rates going negative. So um, shorts are actually paying longs to be open right now. So there's, there's an appetite being more short in this market. There's probably a lot of hedging going on. But this is not what you want to see if you want to see those mega low prices. And it's exactly what we're seeing in the Bitcoin price. So if we're just going to pull up this quickly here, it's this sideways chop. It doesn't, it's it's indecisive. There's no one side getting on top of the other. Uh, but the futures markets do look pretty clear that, you know, there probably is going to be upside because of the, um, the indecision and the bears not sticking in the knife. And there was a very famous quote that I really love is never short a boring market. Whenever you get sideways chop that's boring and bears just cannot stick in the knife, you really don't want to be too short um, because generally it can surprise the upside and it's trying to do that. We're just continuously grinding high. I've got a big pulse up this morning. We're, we're gearing up. It does look like we're gearing up for a run at 30,000 this week. Um, and I know it felt like maybe it hasn't and it's going to you know pop downwards, but it does feel that way to me. I think the RSI is reloaded. Everything looks pretty good. This is just on the daily. I could zoom in and you know show you both cases. But for me, yeah, it, it just feels that way. Bears cannot stick in the knife here. And the derivatives are just showing that you know shorts are getting confident again here. So um, yeah, I think this is a really great setup for a higher move. So we're just going to have to see how it plays out. Now, flip side of that, if we see the downward side play out, if we see that because it does feel like we're getting tired. It definitely felt like that we're getting tired at 28,000. I was very keen to potentially cut some exposure at 28,000 last night when I saw us just losing that level last night and yesterday. I was just thinking, this looks so prime for, for a downward move. And then I had to think to myself, all right, well, everyone is expecting this move back to 26,000, 25,000. Is that going to happen? I still don't think it is, but it could. So it could be more of that consensus driven and we have a big spot seller come on the market and we drive lower short. And if it were to happen, this is that buy zone here. So we want to see this, this trend here very clearly get invalidated. So to my eyes, this is almost like just a rising sort of channel situation. If I could, oh, my computer wants to play ball. Um, yeah, similar to that. I mean, it's pretty crude. I can redraw it however you want, but it's very clearly we're in an uptrending channel. We're probably at the base of that. You know, we want to go up and test here, but for the bear thesis to really come into play, we want to see this sort of thing happen. We want to break down from this very clear higher low trend. And then that's when we start to, you know, really test and squeeze into these areas, grab some of that liquidity that's just sitting in this buy zone. You can clearly see that's about 26, about that 25,500 level with that 200 week moving average. Uh, and that's where the liquidity, I think, is going to come in really heavy. And that's when you could see that epic bounce. So it's kind of two options here in my eyes. We either bounce here and we go you know, sort of from here and we just go straight up um, and really test, put the put the bears paces at um, 30,000 because there's some big sells up there. So we need some pretty big momentum to get through. That is absolutely possible. Um, and then we head towards that blue line up here, which I think is uh, a no-brainer. I think that's around uh, 33, 34,000. And then up there, and then we can, you know, start to chop around and test out this upper upper boundary of thirty thousand. I think that's absolutely on the cards. Um, but for me, the contrarian move feels quite right here. The the bullish, and I feel uh, it's contrarian. I think the bullish case is actually quite contrarian here. We're expecting a pullback. A lot of people are expecting a pullback. A nice clean entry point, twenty six, twenty five thousand. Maybe I'm wrong there. Maybe the uh, contrarian play is actually we have the fall over, but we actually break through 25,000 and scare the crap out of everyone. We go down to, you know, 23, 24 before we bounce back through. I don't know if that's the case. I don't feel like that's the case. I think we've got a ton of support beneath. A lot of people that missed out on low 20,000s and um, teens that will be very eager to buy anywhere at the 200-week moving average. But this chop is just annoying so many people and going sideways. So I think people are going to get a bit bored here and we might see some whales move in and push this higher. Uh, that's just a feeling. It's just a guess, um, uh, you know, as well. And you look at the the weekly, the monthly, it's painting that picture that we're going to be going to 30,000 reasonably soon. It looks so um, freaking bullish here. Uh, 
Yeah, well, that's the weekly there. I think more than monthly, the um, the map, sorry, the stock RSI is starting to roll over a little bit here. So this does point to a bit of a reload, what we've actually been seeing. Maybe a bit of a lag there, but the monthly, we bring that up. It's just oh, stock RSI climbing, RSI climbing. And we saw the MACD. It's just moving, moving up, just looking ever up. Really, really exciting stuff on that longer term. So, uh, yeah, we're always going to just go sideways for a little bit. Um, and, and what the... I think the most interesting part to me is not Bitcoin and where that ends up. It's what's going to happen to altcoins. Um, altcoins are, are really at a hiding to nothing a little bit. They're, they're running in short, sharp bursts. There's just not a lot of liquidity. And um, it's we we're watching those liquidity flows. Why isn't the altcoins running right now? It seems like a lot of liquidity is staying in Bitcoin and Ethereum, waiting for this pulse above 30,000. I do think we see a lot more inflow into alts once above 30,000. But right now... Just because every little move by Bitcoin or um, and to an extent Ethereum is sucking the oxygen all out of the uh, the alts. Whenever they have a bit of a move, it gets sucked out of it. Bitcoin has a bit of weakness. Uh, Bitcoin's has a bit of strength. Altcoins get a bit of strength too. And then Bitcoin stops and then altcoins fall off. So very, very typical for a non-bull market um, situation that's, um, that's happening here. Let's go over to some charts that I haven't really looked at for a little while because, again, this just goes to my um, talking points about Altcoins. This is Bitcoin dominance. Now, Bitcoin dominance chart, this isn't entirely useful as it used to be because this does include uh, stable coins in the overall mix, but I still want to show you it because I think it's just an interesting thing to watch. Bitcoin dominance here very much looked like it was running into resistance where um, typically in previous cycles, Bitcoin dominance uh, gets really, really strong out of the bear market and into that next phase because all the capital is concentrating in there. It wants that safety security and wants to capture that run higher out of the bull market, uh, out of the bear market. And then when we see Bitcoin run into resistance, altcoins start to move higher. And that's the dynamic I really want everyone to watch. And right now, this is quite fascinating to me because Bitcoin ran into that resistance. You can see the previous peaks here, this red box here I've just drawn ran into resistance, had a bit of a, a pullback where alts had a bit of a run, and now it's right back where it started. And it just looks like it wants to rip Bitcoin to about 50% would be very interesting. And I, I wouldn't, put, I think that makes total sense. 50% plus, we get above 30,000, a lot of the money's going to fly into Bitcoin uh, from altcoins. So we really won't see those really big altcoin runs like we see, you know, saw back in 2021 and 2017 down here until Bitcoin really tops out and, or not tops out, but has its, as it's run, might be above 30,000, then we have that sort of pull back down. So something like this could absolutely be on the cards for that. And it's a great metric to watch um, for this. So potentially move up. And then that's the pullback, the retest into this box where altcoins can run as Bitcoin goes sideways, and consolidates above 30,000, has the pullback, maybe 48, under 50. And then Bitcoin might take off again. And then we see, you know, a bit of a pullback until, you know, you get the big retail mania of a bull market where then, you know, it really turns and rolls. But so far, so good. Bitcoin dominance is looking quite powerful. Um, total. Yeah. Um, and this helps, again, illustrate the point of lower liquidity in altcoins, but still the fact that altcoins are almost at the extreme point in the cycle where it's just been depressed for so long and it's about to sort of leap out of that. So this is the total market cap excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum. And, and you can look at total market cap excluding um, Bitcoin, you're excluding just Ethereum, all that. But this is really useful because Bitcoin and Ethereum are kind of in their own class a little bit. Right now, the entire market cap without Bitcoin and Ethereum is $377 billion. We can see here it's had a, a pretty serious pullback all the way down to the 0.786 Fibonacci level. Got a little bit low, climbed back above, retested it as support. This is a bit of an inverse head and shoulder situation here on major, major support, the biggest support level you can see um, over, you know, multiple years. So right now, this is very interesting. Uh, this does look like altcoins want to break up. So if you counter things to look at here, Bitcoin looking really strong, altcoins just waiting for a moment to just leap higher and gain a lot more market share. So, um, you know, watch this. I don't think altcoins are going to be depressed for too much longer. And it's kind of like that beach ball being held underwater. All right. Um, another one I want to have a look at here just to Get on your radar, guys, is Arbitrum. Now, it just feels like low-hanging fruit to me, a really good um, a, a good high-risk, high-reward play um, that has, you know, big name, lots of uh, total value locked away, fairly decent fundamentals. Granted, I haven't done a massive deep dive on it, but you just look at something like um, Layer 2B and see the amount of um, US dollars locked away on it. Uh, it's very, very interesting. Now, we had the token release of Arbitrum, had a few pumps in here, 
had another pretty decent drawback, a uh, fallback rather to say this low over here, this low here, 0.786 again. So we're in this territory of reasonably high value, um, good area to you know find that liquidity for yourself if you're looking for support to buy. This kind of area is really, really interesting. Now, I had a like a trend line slash wedge drawn um, overall, just looking at the overall trend going down. I could probably you know change it a little bit, maybe more up there. So duck back beneath it a little bit there. Uh, but overall, I had this little wedge here at the bottom, pretty clear to me, um, and it's you know tagged it twice on the bottom. Had a roar up this morning, back down beneath it, trying to get above. I think Arbitrum here looks really, really good. And uh, I mean, RSI is trying to reload stock RSI. This is on the one hour. We got high. There's just not a lot of price data. But I like this for multiple reasons because it's on Binance. It's got high liquidity. Uh, you know, again, it's, it's no, you can get a fairly good grasp on this token. And I'm not saying this is going to be, you know, the next Ethereum or whatnot, but that doesn't have to be. You know, you can get a pretty decent 2 to 5x out of this over the next 6 to 12 months in, in my view. But this is the kind of area that you really want to start looking. I mean, it, it looks fairly bottomy to me, almost like a triple bottom. Um, and I'm maybe going out on a limb there, but... This looks fairly good. It's the bit of upside. And you can really manage your risk here. You know, it's pretty obvious where you don't want price to go beneath, you know, uh, let's say a dollar. You know, you can, what's the, the price here now? That's maybe a 6% risk reward. You can do it a little bit lower, 7%. You can even be more risk averse and go 3% beneath this wedge. I probably wouldn't do it there. I would do it a little bit further down. Um, but just broadly, the upside is absolutely there um in my view and uh, yeah because this is highly volatile it can run really really fast so like an agix um, whatnot just without the hour narrative so that's that's on my radar guys and you know it's not an in-depth chart but i just wanted to show you stuff that we're watching uh, myself and joe and, and what we're actually trading I'm, I'm trading this at the moment so um yeah i'm interested in that um great to hear what you guys think but uh once above and i think if you want to be ultra risk averse once above uh, 1.26. So this previous high over here, 1.25. Yeah, I'd be pretty comfortable above this area here. Um, 1.23, 1.25. I think that when it starts to get into these areas here, then you'd be looking for pullbacks. You can see some strength and move higher. And I like the little scare that the market gave us this morning too. It's, it pumped quite hard up to about 23, 20. So Bitcoin I'm talking about here, 28,000. 50, it may have even got a 500. So 28,000, just for future reference, 28,600 is that level we want to close above to see 30,000. So today, for our hourly, we really want to see some strength to get us above 20, 28,500, 600. And I think it's coming. Uh, again, watch for that. Have your alerts maybe set. That's when we can see altcoins um, you know, start to run. But we had a bit of a that move up there, and then we had a big crush back. And we see that here with Arbitrum. In fact, this illustrated it quite well. We'll just go to the, the hourly. So this dump here, I think it was it was really starting to run and then had a big dump. That was about, three, and I say big dump, 3%. Uh, that was pretty decent um, across the board because everyone got a bit excited, I think, and started aping it. All right, let's have a look at Ethereum to see where I think it is and where it's going um, because I just like it so much. Um, this makes a ton of sense to me in terms of you know having exposure, increasing your exposure to Ethereum. So anything above um, 18 50, I think, is is super. And you can see how the market right now is trying to really adjust and adhere to this new pricing structure. Now that we're above 18.50, so now let me just show you that. So it's very clear it's adhering to that right now. If it steadies here, she's going to 2,000. I think that's quite obvious. Uh, you know, it's retesting here. It's just gaining strength. The relative strength is so good. It has pullbacks, but it's just not coming down to levels you want it to uh, for a buyer. So we're going to see people chasing this um, in my view, but, you know, this is going one way. It's climbing, it's climbing. It wants that 2,000 level, if not higher. I think that 22, 2,300 um, seems about right. But again, I think we really need 30,000 to get um, taken out of Bitcoin to actually see that. And we're going to see some fireworks, I think, guys. So it should be very, very interesting. Um, if you're playing the Ethereum to, to Bitcoin trade, it, it's quite hard to get a read on right now. And I think you still have to be focused on Bitcoin. But eventually, Ethereum is going to outperform Bitcoin and really have a big run here. Uh, so it's about 23% away from the area I wanted to see it at for me to get really excited for altcoins. And every time, so just you guys are going to go through this every now and then. So just to recap is every time Ethereum breaks out against Bitcoin, so the pair, 
altcoins see generally a massive bump in altcoin season. So if we just ride back a bit here, um, yeah. So you see over here in um, 2017, so when we had the massive altcoin season, you see here that Ethereum was starting to gain on Bitcoin quite heavily, uh, but ran into this sort of perceived resistance. It wasn't there previously, but just have a look here. When it broke out here, broke out from here, created those all new time highs against Bitcoin and just ran. Altcoins went absolutely cocoa bananas. If we have a look back in 2021. You see here this peak here, um, February 1st, 21. When we made a new high here, rang in 2021, we saw altcoins absolutely fly. So it's a very good metric to watch. And for mine, this is a, a range that's been very heavily adhered to. And maybe I'll just do another way. There. I can almost move that up to be fair about there. Uh, you know, once this breaks to the upside, yeah, look out, look out. So 0 .0, uh, 0.08 is that area which I'm watching and it's that previous peak area. You could move it up maybe a fraction, but I think just we've been seeing it just get a bit weaker and weaker and weaker. Bitcoin running should see this probably come back and tag this 200 on the weekly, which would be very nice. And then I think you could really look for this kind of you know, gap up sort of situation. Um, and I can absolutely see that when you, again, you have your alerts kind of set for this because it will tell you when you're about to see altcoins really fly. And you could, you know, have a, a bunch of orders that you have in your mind that you really want to execute, but you're waiting for the right time uh, in altcoins. Could be in high risk, could be in medium risk, doesn't matter. Maybe you have this chart, you know, favorited and bookmarked and have these levels maybe in your alerts. And when you see, you know, 0.08 taken out, you go, bang, I need to action those orders right away and get that really going because I think the higher probability is that altcoins are really going to run here. Um, LTC, yes, of course. So um, LTC, you know, I've been big on it. I want to show you as well what Joe and myself are going more heavily into in our portfolios. Um, Litecoin, we've both increased the percentages of Litecoin in our portfolios. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite us, but I don't think so. I think with this, it makes it a lot easier when you know that there's a concrete narrative uh, sort of supporting the thesis at the end of it. If it was just kind of speculation, you're looking at patterns and TA and whatnot, you know, that's one thing. Um, but if you're looking at all that and then including a, a big catalyst, which generally, you know, is sort of like a self-fulfilling prophecy where uh, market participants just chase it which I'm expecting it to happen, you know, before August, but it'll be April, May, June, July, August. So we've got, I think, a couple more months where this should have a run, but you do want to front run it, I believe. Um, I think it should peter out by probably end of June, maybe early July. So it's going to be very interesting how it plays out. And I think stop loss management is just key. Uh, don't get too greedy and, and don't underestimate how high it can go either. Uh, but for mine, Litecoin, the relative strength it's shown, you know, at the start of the year, you could argue that this move from the low all the way up to, you know, 100 potentially was the halving move. That's absolutely on the cards. That's true. Um, but I think we've got one more large move above 100 in us. And uh, for mine, I'm seeing this, you know, cons consolidation pattern still with a lot of relative strength around $90, which gives me a lot of hope. I would start to get quite worried about Litecoin in terms of higher gains. If we see that, break of this trend line. And I'm, I'm sort of creating an idea of how a pattern might emerge here. And this is kind of how Steve-O does it as well. And I'd encourage you guys to get a bit creative with this and maybe try and preempt patterns as they emerge. So I'm preempting that Litecoin's actually moving into an ascending wedge here. You can see here, this is the roof, that white line. And this trend line, which is quite visibly adhered to, uh, is that um, you know the bottom or the, the lower part of the wedge where um, price action could look something like this. Not like that, or it comes up and breaks, or it breaks downwards. But that's how I'm sort of envisioning it. And that by the end of, so just looking at the date at the bottom, end of April would kind of track in terms of a breakout. So uh, yeah, I, I like Litecoin here, but I would get concerned if we lose, you know, 89, uh, you know, with a bit of conviction, we close below. That would be a pretty much a short for me down to these levels. But even that, I think because the halving is coming up, we could have a bit of a drop into this um, liquidity zone in here. And then that's when we, you know, come back up into the triangle, something like that, fake everyone out and go higher. So lots to think about. But if you have that broader long-term um, view with some of these cryptos and you're not too worried about the, the intraday volatility and the daily volatility, I think you can make a ton of money by just positioning. Uh, and that's what I kind of done with this. Um, 
so yeah, yeah, full disclosure, I have a, a large position in um, Litecoin in my portfolio, but also have a leverage position as well. I'm pretty confident with that, that I've got a, you know, fairly it's low leverage, but I've got, you know, a reasonable chunk of capital, which I've levered up on a very low amount of leverage. I've got a very low base for a liquidation level as well. So, you know, it has to fall beneath a certain number, which I think is pretty unlikely for it to actually, you know, wipe me out. Uh, I'm not running with a very tight stop loss because I want to give myself some room for flexibility for something like this. Um, but I would get very concerned if $85 gets lost. That's kind of my invalidation point. And I'm just going to play it by you with alerts uh, and go from there because I'm expecting some, you know, just raise of wire volatility going up. But you just don't want to be spooked out of position uh, because that's what these market systems are trying to do. These very competitive algorithms and um, institutional traders are trying to do. Uh, but for mine, yeah, Litecoin just makes a ton of sense here. It's really trying to move. And, and when it does, I think 115 is on the cards. Um, and maybe the top for me, oh, look, I think I've got orders at 115, 149, and also a bit of a percentage that I'm going to let run to 200. The only reason I have that, and I think it's reasonably unlikely, is uh, the last few cycles I've been, you know, I've been investing and watching trading Litecoin as well. And it has, once it's gone to 150, it generally goes to 200, 220. 250 at maximum so you do want to have a little bit in the tank let it run and you could do a trailing stop loss i'm not the biggest fan of those because the dynamics of the you know how it throws in the the limit order you do really have to be watching it playing it making sure the market is moving then you know then you throw in the order after that um yeah so that's just my way of thinking i like to have targets and then moving up stop losses slowly um, but anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. But just broadly to summarise my thoughts, we've got a lot going on this week with uh, macro um, inflation rates and whatnot. Just keep it very, very simple. Keep your eye on the prize going forward. Uh, of course, the market's being led by Bitcoin. Watch the uh, Ethereum to Bitcoin chart. I think that's really, really useful um, going forward. Uh, sorry, Ethereum to Bitcoin, if I didn't say that, not Bitcoin to Ethereum. So watch that very, very carefully. Um, dominance is interesting. Total market cap is very interesting to me. Some opportunities I do see is Arbitrum, of course, Litecoin. There are others, um, I, but I would focus on just a just few, the top. You know, the, the Bitcoin, Ethereum, something like an Arbitrum, you could do a bit of a higher risk. You know, you could look at something like AGIX, but so far it's been pretty disappointing, but it's sitting at the bottom of the range. So look at that. Um, you know, Matic's been quite disappointing. I'll just have a look at my list here and just see if anything just jumps out. Uh, I mean, you know, Matisse is an interesting one with Arve, but I'm not getting too bullish on that um, until, and I'll, I'll just bring it up because I like Matisse and I'm going to maybe challenge my thesis here. We'll see. Uh, so you can see very clearly here on my chart that I've got an alert here, alert, pay attention at 30. So when it crosses 30, that's when I'll get very interested. I, mean, I actually really like what it's trying to do here um, and how it's you know bounced off this heavy support level and it's trying to go higher. I think this is going to consolidate and probably shoot higher. But I'm not going to get interested in Matisse until it's above 30, comes back down, retests support. Um, you know, for me, it's still under major resistance here, um, and I'm not I'm not looking to to roll into that um, just yet. Uh, Shiba Inu, yeah, I keep an eye on that. I'm, I'm calling a little bit on that after. Uh, Twitter did its thing. This, okay, this here, right, doesn't look too flash to me. Oh, well, there you go. I've actually got it drawn. My computer is just a bit slow. That looks like it's pretty clearly breaking down from a uh, from a wedge. i have short that down to here. Then you might have a bounce back. If it doesn't break down here and goes high, I'd love to see that, but we'll see. I think these are just, it's not the right time for something like Shiba Inu. Shiba Inu is probably a bit down the road. Then again, these can have really strong pumps, so keep an eye on it. Uh, Matt, it just been so disappointing of late. Yeah, that looks pretty, I, for mine, um, and this is something that Joe and I have been talking about, for mine, this is my own personal opinion, is that I'm really only interested in Matic, uh, you know, unless you're a longer term investor, but I'd be only interested in trading Matic if it goes below a dollar. <laughs> I think that is kind of a max pain point for a lot of uh, a lot of people that they don't want it to go below a dollar. But I think if it goes below a dollar, um, that's when they get very, very interested to me though. You got those high lows, sure. RSI looks pretty trash. Stock RSI is reloading. You can make an argument. But again, focus on the, the other ones, on Bitcoin and the larger ones, because I think that's where the, the money is to be made right now. All right, guys, uh, have a wonderful day. I've always had a blast. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode as well. Leave your comments and feedback, and uh, we'll go from there. So have a wonderful day. Bye.